Your basement is probably the least healthy place in your home. Finishing them, in my opinion, is a horrible idea. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the four hidden dangers of basements and what to do about it. I'm here in front of my sump pump. If you have a basement, you probably have one too. This is the pit that allows all the water around your house and underneath your house to drain through gravel fields and pipes and dump in right back here. It keeps the water pressure from building up underneath the slab in your basement and pushing on the walls and that pressure could be really high. It's actually one of the biggest reasons that you get cracks in your basement floor and in the walls. Depending on how good the drainage is around your house as well as how high is the natural water table in the soil, those are the factors that are gonna decide how much water is constantly trying to get into your basement, all right? For most people, it is more than what's comfortable. As you can see here, I've got the dehumidifier going. I recently redid this whole section here. This used to be a, a complete open pit here, and I went ahead, I put a modern sump pump basin in and covered it so that we can you know, start controlling the moisture down here. But that moisture, is at the heart of so many of our problems inside of the basement. This dehumidifier has been running for our three days nonstop. It's taken the humidity levels here down from over 80% down to the high 50s, and it's still working nonstop to try to get it down to around the 50 mark. So let's get into some of the problems that this humidity causes. The first thing I wanna go over with you, and the most obvious is mold. If you look up at my ceiling here, see that white stuff? That's all mold. And if you look at this black dust here, those are dead mold spores. Over here under the basement stairs, you can see there's a ton of mold down there. Even on the areas where I've replaced the subfloor to get rid of the mold, you can see we've got this black stuff here. And again, all dead mold. The mold problems in this house are actually what got me interested in healthy building. And you may be thinking to yourself, you know, I've seen a little mold in my house, but I'm not coughing, I'm not having any allergy problems. So it's not affecting me. And this is what I thought for a long time until I learned a whole lot more about mold. There is mold allergy, which is probably gonna be an irritation to your lungs, coughing, typical allergy sort of symptoms. And there's also mycotoxins. Now I'm not a doctor, but I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown of what mycotoxins are. They are toxic gases released by the mold itself. They're tiny, they're odorless, you can't see them. These mycotoxins are really bad for you. And the symptoms that they're going to cause you to have aren't necessarily going to look like traditional mold allergies. I believe for me, they're causing problems with brain fog, with like depression-like symptoms, gut problems. But there's a whole slew of other symptoms that these mycotoxins and mold can be linked to that people just don't know about. I was very ignorant on what mold could be doing to me for so long. So the mold really comes from two different things. Number one, it comes from a leak, all right? You get a leak in your roof, that water drips down, it lands on top of your drywall or your framing, and you've now created the two conditions you need for mold to grow. Number one, you need moisture. And number two, you need an organic substance for it to eat, so to speak. So the paper on your drywall obviously would. For example, OSB. OSB is already partially degraded, you know. It's gotten all chewed up, like mulched. It degrades faster and grows mold more easily than, for example, a plank of wood or plywood. On the other hand, there's building materials that don't have organic substance to them like concrete and steel. Mold is not going to grow on concrete or steel naturally, but if a layer of dust floats in and lands on that concrete or steel, that dust can contain the organic food for the mold. And so you can end up having mold on things like a block wall down here or a concrete floor or the steel beams over there. When humidity gets up over 50%, especially when you start getting past 60, 70%, that air is now gonna make things around it wet to where things like my, my subfloor, the bottom of it up here, my beams, they're all gonna start growing mold. And that's a little bit of what's happened here. Right here, I'm by this sump pit that was wide open. 
for as long as this house has been here, I just changed that. I've got the dehumidifier going. There's many more steps I could take to stop the mold in this basement if I wanted to just spend tens of thousands. For example, we could do a full dewatering system. We could cut up the slab, run pipes all around, get it to drain way better. We could dig the dirt out from the outside and put pipes around there, get that to drain better. That's just not realistic for a house like this. You know, this is a $250,000 house and I'm already gonna spend way too much money on it fixing this sort of thing. So running dehumidifiers down here full time to control the amount of moisture in the air, that's what we're gonna do. Now, luckily I don't have a finished basement, but I want you to imagine that we were having these humidity problems and I had studs all along here with drywall and I had carpet down on the floor or even just LVP. This would create such a problem, guys, because you, you can't see the mold then. All right, you don't really know what's happening. So one of the best ways to know if you've got a mold problem, if your basement is finished and you can't see any of it, is to test the moisture content in the air. Most stores carry a thermometer to you know, set over your sink and it'll tell you the time, the temperature, and the humidity, all right? Just put one of those down there. And if you have high humidity, if your humidity is 60, 70%, there's a very good chance you've got mold growing behind your walls. You can do DIY testing, and the, you can get little petri dishes and, and put them out and let the air land in there and then cover them up and then mold will grow if it's present in theory these are not that accurate but i've used them in my own house and sure enough they do work but the truth is on this diy testing a lot of times you can have mold and these aren't really going to pick it up because they only get it if it's really bad well i got it i got it all throughout my basement it measured in my bedroom upstairs. It did not measure on the top floor. Now that doesn't mean it's there. And this testing also doesn't take into effect the mycotoxin. So these mycotoxins, they get released from down here. And guess what? Here's my air handler. Now the air handler doesn't have a return in the basement. There's no vent where it's pulling air from the basement and pushing it to the rest of the house. You would never do that because the air quality in your basement is probably worse than anywhere in the house, but we'll get to that in a minute. But that does not mean that this unit is perfectly sealed up. You look up around it, you can see that, you know, this is just sheet metal bent together, all right? It's, it's no doubt, it's sucking air from around many of these cracks. If you look at a place like over here, you can see I tried to drop a little foam in it, but I can stick my finger up through there. It's, you know, it's vacuuming air right there. It's getting sucked in. So now these mycotoxins and everything else that is growing down here gets sucked in a little bit at a time into my HVAC system and then it, that just distributes it nicely throughout the rest of my house. Amazing, right? So don't finish your basements, run your dehumidifier, and then that moves us on to the next real problem with basement, overall air quality problems in the basement. Like we already covered here, this thing is sucking air whether it's got a vent down here or not. Now, maybe if you've got a brand new system and it was installed really well, it's sucking very little air. But let's talk about the air quality down here. Now, this was just an active construction site. I was digging a hole in the ground, but does this basement look very clean to you? No, we've got dust all over here. We've got the cat box, you know, we're trying to get it away from us. Over here in the corner, what do we have? We took all our chemicals, and we stuffed them down here. Now, most of those are closed up, but best believe there's a little bit of off-gassing going on from that stuff there. And, and since there's no return down here, there is a vent, but there's no return, we don't have anything sucking the air out of here to keep it fresh. The basement windows, they kind of open, but let's be real, we don't ever open our basement windows, and you probably don't either. We've got our sump pump in our laundry basin and our sink, and all of these things are just making humidity all the time too. So what does this lead to, all right? It leads to tons of PM 2.5 and PM 10. These are particulate in the air. Think of it as dust. PM 2.5, too small for you to see, plenty big enough for you to breathe in and affect your lungs over time. PM10, this is the sort of dust that you can actually see. But you have really high levels of this in the basement compared to the rest of your house, more than likely. You add to that the VOCs from things off-gassing, you've got all your chemicals stacked up, and then finally, you add in this high humidity problem. 
you just create a great environment for dust mites to thrive and grow. And finally, you add in this lack of air movement, this lack of cleaning, and this high humidity. You've got a perfect environment for the air to just be in horrible condition, for dust mites to grow, and to just wind up being a very unhealthy space for you. So just like with mold one, we're getting our humidity under control, all right? We're running our dehumidifier. Two. We're taking our toxic chemicals and we're taking them out to the garage, which you can see I haven't done yet. Three, we're occasionally going to clean and open the windows down here and let fresh air in. We can also run an air purifier down here, which is an awesome idea if you've got your other things in check, all right? If you've got radon, which we're about to get to, or you've got mold, which we just went over, an air purifier circulates air as it you know, sucks in and blows out. You don't wanna circulate air any more than you have to if you've got issues with those things. Moving on to point number three, toxic substances. If you look at this piece up here, I do believe that is a sheet of asbestos. When we look at the floor over here, what do you see? There used to be floor tile down here, all right? I can almost guarantee you this old floor tile was asbestos. Now, I didn't have to deal with that. You look at this dark bluish gray paint, there's a good chance whether this top coat is or not, I don't think the top coat is, that this was once covered in a lead-based paint along with these stairs and along with this beam up here. There's a good chance that you too have some of these toxic chemicals in your basement from the past if you have an old house. Now, if your house is built after 1980 or so, you probably don't need to worry about this, but I believe lead paint was finally outlawed in 1978, but it was used very heavily for a period of time before that. Now, both of these items, if undisturbed, are not that much of a danger to you, but the concern is disturbing them, all right? Specifically lead-based paint, you know, if it's on your stairs and you're walking up and down them, you are disturbing it, you know? Anything that's dusty or flaking, like that paint is being disturbed, especially a big deal if you have kids. As far as asbestos goes, you're gonna find that in ceiling tile, floor tile, some insulations. I mostly run into it in floors and it's less of a concern with being disturbed generally. But if disturbed, it causes lung cancer and a bunch of other bad stuff from the fibers being inhaled. And you can test for both of these things. With the lead, you can take a little chip and you can use these just little sticks that you can order off Amazon and they're at some big box stores too and they'll turn a certain color if it is lead, all right? Now remember, if it's been painted over, you probably need to scrape a chip up, flip it and do the back side because the top layer, like in my basement here, is probably just a latex-based paint. There's probably lead underneath. As far as asbestos goes, you can chip off a tiny little piece and send it in for testing. Obviously, you should be wearing protective gear to do both these things. And this leads us to our final danger of basements, radon. Radon is a radioactive gas that is the number two leading cause of lung cancer in the United States. It seeps up through the soil and it comes into your basement or your crawl space through cracks in the slab, around pipes, anywhere that it can get in. There is no safe level of radon, guys, but the EPA has said that if it's under four picaries per liter, I think I'm saying that right, it's kind of an obscure measurement, but it's essentially measuring how much gas is inside a liter of air. Essentially, all you need to do is get a meter and you need to look at the numbers on there. And if this number is four or higher, you definitely want it mitigated. In my opinion, you want it mitigated even if it's less than that, all right? My long-term average is 0.51, and that's about 10% of what the recommended amount of which you should mitigate at is, so I'm gonna leave it be in my house. But if it was one, two, or three, I would probably get a system installed, and the systems aren't even that much money. You can get one for like 1,000 to 1,500 bucks professionally installed, and all it really is is they're gonna drill a hole underneath your slab. They're gonna put a pipe down there, and they're gonna seal it in they're gonna put an air pump on that and it's gonna pump air from underneath your slab up and out above your house so that it's not blowing back in through the windows. And that negative pressure that it makes there is enough to just kind of remove that radon gas from the soil around and keep it from coming up into your house. As far as testing goes, you can get a little meter like this on Amazon. I'll actually put the link to this down below. And you just need one for your basement if it's an open layout. Now, if you have 
like multiple sections and they're closed off, you probably should get a meter for each section. But I highly recommend doing this is about a hundred bucks if I recall. And you want to know if your house is poisoning you with radon, okay? Control the moisture, clean your basement, let fresh air in, take the toxic chemicals out to the garage. Don't live down here, don't finish it. And that's gonna help your health and the health of your loved ones. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe and drop a comment down below to tell me what you think or let me know if you have any questions.